Welcome to the Equestrian Perspective Podcast. I'm Felicity Davies and I'm here to simplify horse training and teach you absolutely everything you need to know about how to build both your own and your horse's confidence levels, form an amazing relationship together and feel empowered in any environment. And on this podcast, I'll be sharing my best advice, trainings and mindset shifts so you can truly connect with your horse and pursue your goals in a way that feels good for both of you. So get ready to embark on a new equestrian perspective and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to the Equestrian Perspective podcast and today I have with me Alison Curtis. And Alison is one of my amazing one-on-one Confident Equestrian Program clients who has just finished my Confident Equestrian Program 12-week online program and I really wanted to have her on the podcast because the transformation that she's undergone over the past three months has been really really incredible Um, so just to really encapsulate her for where she was before we started um, when I asked her what was stopping her from achieving her goals on her own she mentioned the fear of getting hurt messing her horses up the fact that she's not good enough, even though she's had years of training and experience, failing her horses and letting them down, and the fact that she was lacking self-confidence, not just with her horses, but with everything. And she was committed to making this change now because she said, if I don't do something now, then when? And every day she feels guilty because she's not out there doing more with them and she doesn't want to be stuck in the same spot a year from now. And when I read that out, it feels really... Like part of me goes, how are we about to talk to the same person (laughs) like three months later? (laughs) Um, So I just wanted to share that at the beginning because if anyone is listening that resonates with any of those pieces, which I know so many equestrians do, I think you'll find Alison's journey really, really inspiring. So welcome to the podcast, Alison. Thank you for joining me. I think that brings tears to my eyes because it's just like I can't it was so hard where I was and I look at where I am now and it's just like, I, it's so much has changed in the last three months. It's just been totally amazing. Like I'm not even that person anymore. No, no, definitely. Do you want to share a little bit about you and your, your background? Oh, let's just start at the beginning. Let's, let's start all the way at the beginning. So can you tell us about how you got into horses and a bit of your journey from when you started to before we started the program? Um, Well, I didn't get start. I've been a horse. I was born a horse lover, but I did not get my first horse until I was in college. Um, My graduation present from high school was riding lessons. And my parents thought that would sort of pacify me. Little did they know that just like fed the fire. And um, I just went on from there and I started apprenticing with a trainer. So I was in college and I was riding all the time. I bought my first horse and I had him all through college, got a second horse. And after college, I moved, took the horses with me. I started graduate school and then it just got to be too much. The horses, the finances, the time, and working. So um, I sold my horses. And that lasted about a month before I was so like, I cannot not be with horses. So I found through some friends, a guy that had like 15 horses, and then most of them were race ex race horses that he had rescued. And nobody was riding any of them. And he had a couple quarter horses. Somehow he had all these random horses. I don't really, it was kind of a strange thing. But at the time I didn't care because I was just able to ride. So I had free reign at the barn to ride all the horses I wanted, do whatever I want. I took them to shows. Um, And then I started volunteering at a therapeutic riding center. And it was either my second or my third time there the director approached me and she said, hey, we have this three-year-old quarter horse filly who's only been saddled and sat on and that's it. She really just needs some miles. Would you be interested in leasing her? And I'm like, okay, well, sure. Cause it was just gonna be a free lease, just cleaning stalls um, a couple times a week. 
So, and then that got me Sable, which I still have now 20 years later. Um, and yeah, I ended up buying her a couple years after that, after I started leasing her. And then um, we moved to Virginia. I worked with um, several dressage trainers. I bought a second horse and it just kind of snowballed from there with me working with different trainers. I had the two horses and then I got a third and it's just, yeah. Love it. Um, yeah. It's just but, like you get one yeah. and you, or you have that experience and then everything just snowballs on top of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so it sounds like you had a lot of experience with horses. Can you share with us about how you went from having all of this experience to feeling the way that you were feeling before you joined the Confident Equestrian Program and just share a little bit about that journey? Um, okay, so about, I guess it was 2014, one of my horses uh, contracted Lyme disease and it was pretty severe neurological. Um, she just had a lot of sensitivity issues. There was just so much going on with her. Um, health wise, she started colicking on a regular basis, I couldn't really ride her. And it was just, it was a very, it was a difficult thing to go through. And I was studying all I could about Lyme and horses, and there just wasn't a lot. Um, you know, but we were just doing the best, my vet and I just doing the best we could um, to treat her, to treat her symptoms and just try to work with keeping her as stable as we could. Um, then the following year, I got Lyme disease and um, several other tick-borne illnesses. There's this whole long laundry list of things that came along with it. And I was... Um, about the only thing I was able to do was feed my horses for about five years. Um, I was on antibiotics and I oral antibiotics. And then for one year I had a port, a central port put into my chest for IV antibiotics. And during that time, I wasn't able to spend much time with the horses at all because of fear of infection or them knocking my port. Plus I was so sick, I could hardly function. Um, and then I started to get better. I still, my horse Maggie still had Lyme and we were still dealing. She had had colic surgery during the time I had, was sick. And um, she had to have her ovaries removed because she haven't had a, over and hemorrhagic ovaries. And this was all while I was sick. So I got better and started working to get my health back so that I could ride. But I, and then I lost Maggie. Um, she passed from colic. It was really quick actually. Um, and from there, it's just like everything just, like everything associated with the horses and being in the bar, I was so worried about colic or somebody getting hurt or me getting hurt or me getting sick. And it just kind of like snowballed into this huge fear for myself, for my horses. Uh, I, and then about eight months after Maggie passed, I adopted um, a retired racehorse and I thought, well, maybe this will get me more motivated to get out to the barn and it just didn't. And I just would sit here in my house and look out at my horses in the pasture and feel guilty. Like why am I, I've always, horses have been my life. They've been my passion. They have kept me going through my illness. Mm -hmm. And how can I not want to be out there and doing things with them? And it was every day I would just like mentally just beat myself up about why, what is wrong with me and why can't I get out there and just ride or do anything with them? Mm 
Yeah. Every time I went out, I felt like it was such a chore and I was just in a hurry to get done and be back in the safety of my house, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And how long were you like that? Yeah. How long were you like that? So since you like recovered from your Lyme disease and then up until the point of contacting me, how long were you battling that for? So that was probably about two years. I would say one year was me like really just trying to recover physically and mentally. So I wasn't able to do a lot with the horses. And then at the time that I was finally really recovering is when I lost Maggie. And that I think really sort of like just triggered some, you know, I don't know what, but it just, I felt like I had fought so hard to get better and then I lost her. Yeah. And and it, yeah. It just adds another layer to, I can't go outside because like, it's just not safe for me to experience. I can't experience any more adversity at the moment. Like I'm, I'm done. And there's so much in your case, like it seemed like there's so much risk involved of putting yourself in that vulnerable position and getting close to the horses or being outside. And it's just like, of course, everything well, your body's just trying to keep you safe. So it's just going, no, 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 let's just, let's just stay inside. <laughs> um, much to your yeah. uh, uh, discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. So that was what you were like when you joined the program. And thank you for sharing all of that. I really appreciate it because I'm sure there are other people that are going through perhaps something similar to you um, that are, that have experienced some really, hard things in their life and they're just at this point where they're like what's wrong with me why aren't I like I used to be um and I think it's really brave and vulnerable that you're sharing this part of your story because I haven't heard this story shared in lots of other places especially so soon after the person has sort of been feeling good does that make sense Mm -hmm. yeah Um, yeah and it's hard and I felt like I was alone like I, how am I, how am I ever going to get out of this? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was not a, a happy place to be. Yep. So then do you want to share the like tipping point when you went from being like that to finally reaching out to me? Cause I know you heard me on a podcast. So what really triggered that pot? Like, what did I say that triggered you to kind of reach out? Well, I heard, you know, you described your confident equestrian program and I just really remember the words resonating in my head. Like if you don't, if you don't do something now, when are you going to do it? Yeah. And that was where I was at. It's like, I can't like not do anything anymore. You know, I can't just keep letting this get worse. Yeah. But then I remembered when I talked to you and I'm like, well, is this the time to start? You know, it's winter. Do I wait? And you're like, no, do it now. Yeah. 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 And a lot of people come to me um, in similar situations where they're super intrigued, but maybe the weather isn't so good or they're going through some other life stuff at the moment. And it kind of seems like, oh, maybe I'll just pause and do it later when I'm in a better position. And it's just like, no, let's get what we can do let's get what we can get done now um, and really help you enjoy the process, whether you can do all the activities in the program or not, like it's still going to be beneficial. Um, So, yeah, so we had our first call together and then you decided to join, which is amazing. Um, Do you want to share like a bit of your journey through the program um, and navigating that part? Because I remember there was even one call where you were just like, look, the weather's been bad. I haven't really done much, but you decided to show up to our call anyway. Like you thought about cancelling, but then you were like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna show up. So do you want to share a bit of your journey in the beginning? Well, it was a really horrible winter here in Virginia. We had had a lot of snow. It was right after I joined the program. We had a lot of snow. Our power went out for a week. Yeah. It was so cold and so miserable here. And it was like, okay, I really don't want to go out and do stuff with the horses now. The horses are miserable because it's just wet and cold and frozen. Yeah. And I just told myself, okay, I just have to do, I can't, like, I keep making excuses. And I'm going to always find an excuse, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like, 
I just have to start. So I just started doing some of the small things like the, the positive reinforcement and clicker training. And it would take me five minutes with each horse. Mm. And they were so engaged and so excited. And, you know, as soon as I would get the, I would start doing the clicker with one horse, then they're all sticking their heads out, their stall doors, you know, like, is it my turn? Is it my turn? Yeah. And so then I really realized that even just spending five minutes with each horse, Mm -hmm. it was a lot. And it was just right for me because I needed to slowly build myself up to spending more time with them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just start to, I I really love how positive reinforcement as well really forces you to see the good in everything because you have to capture that. Um, So, yeah, it was really beautiful to just see you go on that journey to recognizing that that was enough. Yeah, you know, because I always had this thing in my head that I need to be riding, I need to be lunging, you know, I've got to work horses for an hour. And it's got to be this long drawn out process. And I've got to groom everybody and then Mm -hmm. get them ready to ride or work and then groom again. And it's like with the clicker training, all I need is just, you know, my little bag of treats and the clicker and the horses can be anywhere. Yeah. And they're stall and out of the weather and we can do something and they're engaged and they're having fun. And I was happy. Like I actually had fun for the first time with my horses in such a long time that it was just like, there were no burdens. It was just fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really about just shifting, uh, shifting the script of going like, okay, you can still have fun doing like, in lots of different activities with your horses. It doesn't just have to be the one hour ride where you have a good time. It can be these small moments. Um, And you were already spending quite a bit of time just doing their general care anyway. So it's like, oh, how can you just shimmy in a few minutes of something extra or even just enjoy the time that you spent feeding them like and all of that sort of thing, which was really, really important for you to just go, hey, the barn's like a safe place to me. It doesn't add more burden. It's actually a really fun time to be grateful and just reflect and just share that time with the horses. Yeah. And then I learned a lot about their learning style, you know, even just, you know, five minutes at a time, how each one kind of had their own way of, of learning. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'd had, two of the horses I had Sable for 20 years and I've had Dewey for 10 years and I learned things about them, you know, just in those short little sessions that I didn't even know Yeah. before. Yeah. That's beautiful. All right. Do you want to share a bit more of your journey from, I guess, that point to now? Um, and maybe do you want to share a little bit about not just the things that with the horses that were coming up, but the other areas that we focus on too, because it really felt like to me, you've been going through a massive like up level, <laughs> which is quite uncomfortable um, in lots of areas of your life. But yeah, do you want to just share a bit of a bit of that journey? Um, yeah, so when COVID start, so I am a scientist and I was working as a contractor And when COVID started, I was no longer able to work. And all after my, during my wellness journey, I started practicing yoga. And then I got my yoga teacher certification, went on and got another yoga teacher certification. And it was during COVID. And I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Well, I guess maybe I'll start a yoga business, which looking back, I don't even know what I was thinking, but whatever. But I did it anyway. And I put so like I had put all that energy that I normally would have put into my horses into trying to make this yoga business work that I wasn't 100% passionate about. Like I love yoga and I love teaching it. But I don't want to be a millionaire teaching yoga. I just want to help people yeah, you know, ride better and feel better with yoga, but I was putting so much on myself. 
Mm. And so it was like I was replacing my time with the horses and energy with the horses with this yoga business, mm. and which I wasn't happy with. So it was like everything, I was just unhappy and stuck. And so when we started working together, you really like, we really talked a lot about my business and like where I wanted to go with it and what I wanted. And did I even like the business and how did I want this business to look that was felt comfortable to me where I would enjoy it again. Yeah. And I and think th as navigating through that, um, a lot of stuff came up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of the times people are like, no, 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 that's not affecting my horses. Like it's just the horses. And it's like, of course you're like you running a business. And I know very much how like running your own business can take up a lot of your time and energy, especially if you're channeling it in a way that actually isn't where you would like to go. You're just sort of doing things because you feel like you should do them. So it's like you're already energy limited because you've recovered from your illness. Now you're getting back into the swing of things. It's like no wonder you don't have the time to spend with the horses because your brain is just focused on all of these other things and trying to make everything else work. So, yeah, it was really cool to just spend a bit of time with you just reflecting on what does Alison want and what, is Al make, what, is, what makes Alison happy? Um, so it was just cool to see you go through that journey. But do you want to share a little bit more of your journey um, in the Confident Equestrian program since that point and some of the decisions that you've made? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, really thanks to all the mindset work that we've done together and it was way more than I ever anticipated. I mean, and it was exactly what I needed and I didn't even know it. And, you know, I like the uh, spiritual things, you know, I'm a yoga person. I like, and, and so do you. And I, and so it, that kind of came out again and using the cards and, using um, like human design, there were so many modalities that you use that just like made me start thinking, bringing me back to what I really felt good about. And then as I started to feel better about myself and set some boundaries with my business mm -hmm. and set my business up how I wanted it to be. Like I'm just teaching a couple in-person classes Beautiful. and I'm happy with that. I don't need to be all over social media. I don't need to have this huge membership site. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing what brings me and other people joy. You know, I'm just trying to help other people. And now that's freed up so much mental space in my mind that now I'm able to work with the horses and have fun with the horses and riding my horses again. I remember when I um, wrote you that I rode for the first time in ages. And then a couple weeks later that I cantered Dewey for the first time ever. Um, and now yesterday I was out there and we were cantering both directions and trotting and just doing, you know, all the normal things. And this is all really just, I've only been back on him a month maybe or a yeah. little bit more. Yeah. And, you know, then I've been working with my, with Sable, my older horse, she has navicular and has some arthritis issues, but I've just been doing, some of the ground exercises with her and she really seems to enjoy it and it's helping loosen her up. And then Opie, my off the track thoroughbred who I was kind of intimidated by because he's huge and he's just got a lot of energy. And I've been working on the ground exercises with him. And yesterday I was actually able to lunge him for the first time in both directions without any craziness. It was nice and calm and relaxed. And it was just like, this is like, where had this gone for so long? And it's just mm. it's so great to have it back. I mean, the first time I cantered on Dewey, I cried because I'm like, I cannot believe I am on my horse cantering. Two months ago, I would have never thought that was possible. Yeah. 
Yeah, it makes me emotional with you just talking about it because it just brings me back to you when you did start and I know the place that you were in and it probably took like that first month of us working together um, was just like, okay, let's just continue to like bring me back to your joy. Let's do this mindset work. That wasn't a whole lot of time spent with the horses. And then it was like after you started to prioritize yourself and the weather got a bit better um, and you just were allowing yourself to have these small moments. It was just so beautiful to see everything come back and you just have your, you're just a different person, like absolutely completely different person. Um, And you could see from what I read out earlier, like every part of you was just like, I can't do it. Like what's wrong with me? Um, to now you're like, you went from being in a position where you felt guilty because you weren't doing more with them when now you're actively prioritizing time with the horses over other things, which is, which I think is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I schedule it in my day, like there, you know, at two o'clock I go out to the barn and I work horses and it's, it's just so, you know, today I just spent time just sitting out in the barn with them after I worked them and, you know, we just stood there and yawned and yawned and yawned, like hanging his head right next to me. And I was like, Oh, he really does like me. <laughs> oh, he totally does. Yes. Oh, that's so beautiful. And it's just, yeah, it's it's really incredible to see, yeah, that like how much they fill you up and just you to allow yourself to actually enjoy that and yeah, recognize how much the horses are such an important part of your life. Um, and yeah, really prioritizing that because through doing what lights you up with the horses and in accordance with your human design as well. You're meant to follow what lights you up. It gives you more energy. Then you're going to have much more clarity in the other areas of your life too. And it's really interesting to see when people, especially um, entrepreneurs, I think, or business owners, when things start to get a little bit unstable, they let go of the things that actually make them happy. And I'm guilty of this too. I went through a period where I was just like, my horses don't need help. I'm just going to focus helping everyone else. And it's just like, no, you've got to fill up your own cup so that you can allow the overflow to go out to other people. And then they're going to be more drawn to you as well because you're actually happy, <laughs> right? Um, right. Like really prioritizing what makes you feel good. And then in doing so, other people are actually going to be able to witness your light and be drawn to you if that's if you still have offerings and things like that. So, yeah, I think it was just it's just so so freaking cool like what did you feel like when you joined the program because I know we're chatting about this the other week when you joined the program what did you expect that you what that it would be like and that you would get out of it I thought it would be mostly just things that I would be doing with my horses and um I kind of had grander ideas than like what reality was, but I thought that's what, you know, like so many programs are just, you know, do this with your, this week, work on this with your horse, this week, work on this with your horse, where this program was not really, I mean, there is that component Mm -hmm. to it, but it all kind of gets mixed together like all everything builds on each other and you can take pieces out and work, you know, different things together. But then the mindset work is such, at least for me, yeah, it was such a huge part of it. And um, so what I got out of it in the end is way more than I could have ever expected. I mean, I never thought I would, like, I feel like everything in my life has just gotten better. I'm happier. I'm happy. Like, I'm happy. Yeah. And it's been a long time since I could actually say that I am happy. Yeah. And I, this program and working with you and finding my joy with my horses, I mean, it's just been everything. Like, yeah. I, I just, it's been amazing. Yeah. I remember at the beginning you said um, you had told me to write a letter Mm. to myself to read in three months. And 
I couldn't even write the letter because I couldn't picture myself in three months in a positive place. I just couldn't, at the time I started, I just couldn't see it. Yeah. And now I look back and like the intro you read, like, it's just, I can't even believe the transformation. And I can't believe that was me. I know. And it's crazy. Like it's, it was three months. Like, and really your, most of your change started to like, you start to feel this way probably two months in really. And then it's just sort of compounded yeah. from there. And it's just like, it's insane. It blows my mind as well. Like, I just think it's amazing. Like, I'm like, how did it, how did this happen? <laughs> I know how it happened. <laughs> but it's just amazing. And the difference with um, my one-on-one work through the Confident Equestrian Program, and I'm thinking about renaming it so it just, because it is a different program where I can go much deeper with people um, and really draw on any, like any, oh, I use human design. So I give you a human design reading. Um, we dive into lots of different mindset modalities. I can read lots of oracle cards. We work on the horsemanship side of things. I'd use all of that um, and as well as talking to you about other areas of your life that are impacting your horses, such as your alignment with your business or your alignment with other things that you're really wanting, you're feeling called to. So I can really draw upon, like get a really holistic picture of this is what's happening in someone's life what are the energy leaks and where, what's blocking them from actually enjoying their horses? And how, unless we address that, that's always going to be impacting what they want to do with their horses. So, yeah, it's a much, yeah, it's, I love working with people that are business owners um, and horse lovers in that space, um, like through my one-on-one work, just to really go, okay, let's get clear on how can we make you happy, <laughs> right? Um, and how can we get you? Well, happy? yeah, and I knew when we first talked that I I knew a group setting wouldn't work for me that I would just sort of get lost and I would just not end up not doing it. Yep. And I needed to make sure that I was really held accountable for doing the work. Mm -hmm. And little did I know how much mindset work was going to come into this. And that was the advantage of of working one-on-one is that we could really focus on Mm -hmm. what my issues were yeah, and how to work through them. Absolutely. And I think also just going through the process of you showing up to every call. And I think at the end of it, you probably only got halfway through the actual video content of the program, which is absolutely fine. That was what we needed to do. Um, And everyone goes on their own journey in regards to the video content because everyone has different horses. Everyone has different life situations. Um, But it was really about prioritizing um, you feeling good about the journey because life happens, things come up. Um, And it was just about you showing up to the calls, continually choosing you. And I'm never going to have a go at anyone for not watching videos. Like I'm going to like praise you for showing up and doing whatever you did do. I think it's amazing. Um, And I think for the perfectionist type of people that are, drawn to working with me, which is pretty much all of my clients have that tendency. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Like we really need that, that validation of going, you did enough. Like you did heaps. You're good. Like the weather was terrible. You're okay. Like you you don't have to beat yourself up. You did enough and you're allowed to enjoy those small pieces. And when you do that, like the bigger pieces will come later or they might come tomorrow or they might come whenever but why not try and enjoy the journey because life is always going to throw stuff at us and we may as well yeah, learn to ride that wave, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 It was just, uh, um, there was so many things like I would before each call a lot in the early parts I was like oh gosh I just don't want to get on the call but I have to do it and I would always feel so much better and it was like the next day was always such a great day because I was feeling so much better after um what yeah yeah and yeah it's just overcoming that initial resistance and continually showing up and then you get the validation of going or the like reinforcement of going oh yeah this actually feels good yeah it's awesome all right so um that so that's where you're at right now you're you're happy which is 
amazing. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, gosh. Not to be so hard on myself and just I'm, I'm good enough the way I am. I don't have to try to be somebody I'm not. I just do what makes me happy and just trust my instincts. Beautiful. And, and, and my horses. Yeah, yeah. And what is your equestrian perspective or a message that you would like to share? Just give yourself a break. You know, there are circumstances that can make life hard, but choosing, you know, we all love horses. I'm sure everyone listening to this is a horse lover and just find a way to spend five fun minutes with your horse, not doing work, not grooming, not even grooming, just doing something fun. Yeah. And even if it's like reading a book to them or singing a song or doing yoga out in the barn or anything, but just, hmm. you know, find that, you know, it's the little moments that make the big difference. Absolutely. And what would you say to someone that I'm just trying to think, that version of you before you joined the program or even earlier on through that period where you were struggling, what would you say to someone who's in that sort of situation? It can get better. I mean, there is hope. Yeah. You know, I did not know. I didn't know if I would ever get better and if I would ever get to where I'm at right now, but it is possible. You just have to trust in yourself and trust your instincts and find somebody to help you yeah absolutely. and don't be afraid to ask for help yeah, yeah 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 and if anyone feels drawn to ask me for help you're more than welcome to send me a message or book a call with me I'd be more than happy to chat with you um and lastly what I wanted to ask you is can, where can people find you? So if they wanted to reach out to you because they resonate with your story or they want to connect with you, because I know you've got some really exciting modalities and things like that in the works that you're still bringing together yourself. Um, but if people wanted to connect with you, what they, what can they learn from you? Um, and how can they connect with you? Um, so I do have my yoga for equestrians business and I mostly just teach a couple of local classes. I do work with some people privately online and I do have an online membership. It's really inexpensive just so that I, and I did that one for myself to take the pressure off and two, to make it accessible to everybody. Yeah. And you can find that at X. Equa Harmony Wellness, and that's on Instagram and um, Facebook. Beautiful. Um, and are you okay if people wanted to reach out and chat with you about your your journey? Oh, definitely. You know, I've had a couple people actually in my Facebook, my yoga Facebook group, that um, have either joined my group because of my story and have reached out to me. Um, because they have in something I've done live or posted yeah. um, that they've resonated with. So I'm always happy to talk to anybody that's yeah. having a difficult time or is a chronic illness, you know, and dealing with horses or has a sick horse. I mean, it's like, you don't have to be alone. There's always somebody I'm always happy to, to listen. Yeah. That's beautiful. And yeah, I think, the, I love that you're prioritizing the things that feel good in regards to your yoga business, doing those in-person sessions and connecting with people. Um, and also, yeah, having the membership because you've got these amazing yoga videos and yoga really transformed your life in regards to you rebuilding your strength and your connection to your body. Um, and yeah, I know we've spoken quite a lot about how much you can see yoga really benefiting riders and them learning how to breathe and use their body. And I think it's really cool that, you're an equestrian yourself teaching it so you can really relate to riders. Yeah. 
Yes. I mean, and you know, it was how I learned to connect with um, Maggie when she was having a lot of her neurological issues. I needed to learn how to be really soft and quiet and calm and control my breath. And that's where yoga really started for me was to start working with her. Little did I know it would be instrumental in my recovery. Yeah. Yeah. No, later that's down amazing. the road. Yeah. So I pulled three cards for you, which are, I don't know how they come out like in order perfect every single time. So we, this is going to be really, very relevant. Look ahead. So like, let's just focus on where we're going. You've learned what you've needed to learn from the past. You've got these amazing lessons. Let's, let's continue to look ahead and plant those visions and just prioritize your joy. The second card is embrace change, um, which I think is very exciting an exciting card for you because there's some other things coming up in the works and some different modalities to add on to what you already know so that you can work with horses potentially, which is really exciting. Um, and then the third card is you are brave. And it's like, holy shit, you are brave. Like look at everything that you've been through and <laughs> overcome to get to this point. Like how amazing is that? It is the cards. Wow. I don't know how it happens that the cards are always just like spot on. Yes. I love it. Um, well, thank you so much for taking the time with me to chat. And I know we're still going to be continuing to work together, um, which I'm really happy about. Um, and it was funny when you said to me, what was it a couple of weeks ago? You're like, I'm not ready to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah, I'm, I'm not ready to be on my own. I need your, your guidance and support yeah. and to be my um, cheerleader, I guess, yeah. um, on the bad days. Yeah, I'm more than happy to support you with that. But yeah, thank you once again so much for joining me and sharing your story. And I just think yeah, to anyone that's listening that's struggling with their horses um, or just struggling to prioritize time with them or just beating yourself up, like really just soak in the change that Alison's been able to achieve in, in such a short period of time. And look, everyone's going to have different timelines for um, how they feel. Um, some people might take longer, some people might take shorter. Everyone is different, but it is possible. Um, and Alison is just a great example of what is possible and that you can bring this beautiful joy back into your life. Um, and sometimes if you're trying to do it alone for a long period of time, sometimes you do just need someone to support you and help you and guide you through that process. Um, so, yeah, thank you once again, Alison. I really, really appreciated you being here and sharing your story. Oh, thank you, Felicity. I don't even, my horses and I can't thank you enough for the transformation. I just never thought it was possible mm -hmm. that I would be where I am at right now. Yeah, you're so, so welcome. You. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Equestrian Perspective podcast. If you really enjoy it, please hit subscribe on the podcast so you can stay up to date with every episode that gets released. And also, if you want to share it around, please do so. Tag me on social media at Felicity Davies with an underscore at the end. And if you have any recommendations for episodes or guests that you would like me to interview on the podcast, please let me know via social media. Or if you have any questions at all, I'm happy to chat and I'm here for you whenever you need. So thank you for listening and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.